guys, welcome to part 3 of Mario Light Jockey Tutorial Series. This will be the last video um, in the series for now. Um, let me know down in the comments below if you want to learn anything else, particular in the program that's, that I haven't covered in any of the videos in this series, and I'll be sure to make a video on it. Uh, but before we get into the video, I want to make mention that uh, we have our, our website's been up for probably about a week now from this upload. And uh, I'll put it down in the description below. It has a bunch of cool stuff in it. Um, you can sign up for our email newsletters, like weekly newsletters and stuff. Um, but yeah, just, I'll put it down in the link in the description below and you can go ahead and check it out. Um, but what we're going to be learning today are uh, how keyless work and how they really impact your, your lights. Because we thought um, cues were like the the top thing but Qless or the next thing the next big thing um, they're basically they're like blocks they stack on top of each other so sequences were scenes were inside sequences and now sequences are inside cues but now cues are inside cueless so we're gonna probably gonna be learning the same thing we've already gone over in the previous videos but um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to make a cue list and a background cue uh, but for now we're just gonna go ahead and go over the layout of the menu and everything so when you have your uh, whenever you have your cue list made you're gonna wanna uh, figure out what, what kind of function you want um, your cue list to run off of and so there are three functions inside of here so there's media player or external media player uh, which is all like already music or videos uh, I'm pretty sure I think it's just music. Um, I've only tried music so far, so y'all might want to try a video and see if it works. Um, they have PC code, um, not real time. This is real time, PC code, and this one's a uh, elapsed time, so it's more of on a clock. So, oops, let me get rid of that. Okay, so, and these are your uh, menu options, like up here, similar to up here. So you just go ahead and hit that button. There's mine I have made already. Um, but what we're going to be doing for right now is uh, just, I'm going to go ahead and make one a cue list. So, uh, the way you uh, set parameters in here are by logging it. So, see, it's already started. Well, it's because I'm running off of this time. I'm still trying to figure out how to get rid of it, but there you go. Okay, so I'm going to pick a song that I've, that I've made and, uh, in FL Studio and let's see now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna play it in the background and it might not sound like the highest quality it's just because of the computer I'm using but I'm gonna go, when I, so the way that you log is you go ahead and you hit this button you hit the play button and then while you're going through the song you hit the log this log control button uh, as the song is going on at certain points that you want the cues to, uh, to change or switch into another cue so Say for instance, when you, when you're at a point in the song where the song is about to drop into like like dubstep, like it's about to drop, you probably want to put a log right as soon as it drops. So you want to put a log as soon as it at, at that. You know, it has to be precise in seconds, but um, just put it around that time frame so it, it changes at that point. So um, and the whole point of having this entire long list of cues is more of a you want to ch you you want to build off each, off of each cue. You want have, you want to have every cue the same, um, and that's where background cues come in handy because not only that are they the lifesavers, but they're man, they're just amazing because you can have basically your cue list is gonna be run off uh, on moving lights and up, I, lights changing colors. This is more of a static sequence that you're gonna put in here. But let me go ahead and log this and we'll go over to, to uh, background cues once you're done. But we'll go ahead and play the, the song. And you'll see, you'll notice that the time starts, uh, starts following the time that's right here. But let's go ahead and play it.
spoil the song. The song is really good. Um, but so you saw as, as the song was progressing, I clicked on it at a certain point. So like, I was clicking. I clicked on my first log was when the bass hit. So the next time I logged was when uh, I got into the deep chords of the, the chord progression, and then the fourth time, I guess I hit the next. I I think I hit the the log on the next bar, and then the fifth time is when um, when it dry, when the the melody came in. But um, that that's just an example of what you can do with one song. So if you have your song, it's more of you want to have your songs reacting to the light. Your lights, sorry, your lights reacting to the sound because uh, that adds more of a dynamic feel to your lights because uh, static lights and just moving lights, just moving around at certain, at like, well, I like got certain points. And you can always do this manually in the queue list, but in the queues, but again, you're always limited to 12. With this, you're not limited. This one's just like your limitless. You have almost, uh, you have a lot more space than what you do in, in queues, so. Uh, this has more flexibility and a lot more creativity in your cues and your sequences inside of those cues. So you can do a lot more, uh, a lot more dynamic things with your lights besides doing a couple of things at a time. Now you can do multiple things at a, t at a time without it, uh, without you, you know, going through all these menus and everything. It does it all right here on a cue list. Um, but what I'm gonna do is in order. To, to get these parameters set in here, you just hit add logs, and then there you go. Okay, so this one's the blank one. Um, the parameter is isn't set because there's no parameter there. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit. I right, hit. Uh, we're gonna start off with a uh, static queue on here. So let me go. I already hit log. I'm gonna hit add log again. And so this parameter is just. It should have uh, the less sign less than sign and a greater sign so that's when you know it's at a zero so I'm gonna go ahead and move it up to the top Oops. so there you go oh, are you serious are you serious okay well no biggie um, so we got rid of one of our lines I didn't want to do that but I guess that's what happens um, so I'm gonna go ahead and in order to get your cues in here you got to go up to your your cue page and I'm gonna go ahead and start with um I'll start with sequence one. And you just drag it right into the cue section. I don't know why light jockey does that but when it's dragging it's like it's, a, it's gonna mess up. But okay, so sequence two and then test one in the next one. Well test and then test dash two next. Oh, did I say I was supposed to do? Uh, okay, uh, um, I messed up again. Stag was supposed to be on top, so I'm just going to go ahead and have that as the uh, the bottom one. But um, but yeah, blackout. I'll just have that as a gap. And blackout is really useful in cues because at certain, it, this is only going to affect the cues by the way. So when you hit blackout, it's not going to blackout your background cue because this is not affected by your cue list. Okay, because your cue lists are basically an overlay sequence or uh, overlay cue over your background cue. And I know all these cues are getting people confused, but that's the way Light Jockey does it. Um, but blackouts do not blackout the entire system. I'll just get that clear real quick. It, it doesn't blackout the entire system because. Um, Unless you have it set to everything's gonna be blacked out, then that's a different story. But if you have like certain lights that you know are not like, say I only blacked out these two moving lights, the intimidators, then those are only gonna be the ones that are gonna be blacked out on that certain cue. But if you want blackout in general, you just need to go up here to your master intensity and hit blackout, and it'll do it. And but this overpowers everything though. This will get rid. Of, this will this will shut off your your lights, all of them. No matter if the background cues running or not, so always, master intensity always overpowers everything. So go ahead and go back to the cue list. And so blackouts are well, I use I usually use them for uh, kind of like gaps in, in a song where there are no light. I don't want any light motion going on. So say at one point you're it, there's a kick, uh, there's a, a kick and a snare, and a kick and a snare, and then all of a sudden snare, and then there's no more noise. 
that's where you could put a blackout where there's no where those certain lights aren't on or you can just hit blackout but again you can use those as gaps inside of your cueless um, okay I already had a static so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through it again and you'll see what I'm talking about so in order to run a cueless you got to hit you got to start with top and then it's gonna so right now the current queue is at I think it's at this one right here the gray box um, the gray shaded area the blue is the next is letting you know that this is going to be a next queue that's going to go up so I don't know why it's not going at number one but that's yeah, fine um, we'll go ahead and start the um, restart the, the song again and um, before you start your song always hit top okay because um, it, it gets kind of to a lag where if you hit this if you hit uh, the play button before you hit this it, it gets kind of a delay so go ahead hit top and then hit play so you see a time is already moving so it's following it so once it hits 10 seconds sequence 2 test and that that's the lights these are the moving lights there's moving in the triangles or well, opposite triangles okay so now it's in test dash two and that's the they move it from one side to the other okay so now it's in a blackout and then as soon as it hits 51 seconds it's gonna be it's gonna have a these are gonna be green okay so now see now they're green so when it goes white, that means that your last queue, um, that your last queue is done. So uh, again, that's how cueless work. They're, it's pretty simple once you get the hang of it. Again, everything in Lightshot gets uh, a lot more easier, well, really easy. Once you actually learn and understand how it works, again, it, it always gets easy. It's like wow, I could figure it out on my own. But uh, I'll go ahead, I'll name it as. Uh, test okay so save as new or save new and so now you have it right there so while we're running the queue list uh, most of the time like when I've used it in my situations or scenarios um, I always have background queue like so I'm gonna go ahead and hit it the background sequence is are these park hands that are going on and off well they're supposed to be going on and off I guess not. Hmm. That's weird. Yeah, I don't know why they're staying in one scene. Because it's supposed to go through two scenes. Hmm. Anyways, usually you want to have a sequence, a background sequence that has lights always on. That way, this is just overlaying it to go on and off. So, say sequence one. I want sequence one to have. Um, I want to have these, these two park ends right here. Okay, right that one. Get, I want these two park hands right here to flicker on and off. Okay, so that's gonna be sequence one. So once we're done with that, then we're gonna go to sequence two. And so in order, well, actually, you know, I could change, I can move this right here, but again, I don't want to mess up anything, so I'll just leave the way it is. Um, but let's say sequence two. I want the the hamsters to go on and off and strobe at 100 percent. Then those will do it. But again. Remember, these are not—they're not stacking these on top of each other. Me, this is not going to be going on while this is well after this is uh, activated. So once that cue's already passed up, that's it. It's not—it's not active anymore. It's just basically going down the list. So however long you want this to run, you you make that gap that that time for it, the, the parameters for it. You set a parameter for it. So that—that's how a cue list works. Remember, it's just not—you don't stacking. You're not stacking cues. On top of each other, you know it says Q list. Uh, I don't know why they would call it a Q list, but anyways, um, if you want to use, you can just use sequences and do and do that. If you want to stack them on top of each other, um, but Q lists don't work that way. They work on an actual Q, uh, an actual Q. So no matter what you do, um, it's it's always going to go to the next Q. Now you can inter you can interfere with it while it's in while this is in play. 
you can go ahead and so go up here and, and change your sequence if you like oh I got the wrong sequence you can switch it on the fly and it, it won't stay as that you can always change it in, in real time so um, it's just easier just to slide it on over there before it happens um, but again that's how the QS works so logging is pretty cool because I just like doing all kinds of stuff kind of fun stuff but um, so background cues are really um, needed it's it's really really needed it's really necessary when you run a cues because the only way you're gonna have your all your lights on or some lights on at a certain time is when you turn those is if you have that same sequence inside every cue in which that's more complicated you're just basically complicating and making it more difficult for you when all you can do is just put that same sequence and put it in background cue and save it. So that's how a background cue works and a cue list works. Um, I'm not. I'm. I'm pretty sure I haven't missed anything else. But if there's anything I didn't go over in this video and or any other videos, um, just let me know down in the comments below, and I'll be sure to make a video about it because I'm. I'm just running out of ideas on how to make videos for Light Jack because. Uh, part one and part two did a lot of it, most of the work. So, um, if you enjoyed the video, like the video, you haven't already subscribed for more content like this and a bunch of stuff on my channel. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and having a very awesome, awesome day.